From New York, where the American stage begins, NBC presents Best Plays, transcribed with John Chapman. series of hour-length dramas based on famous theatrical books, begun by the late Burns Mantle, now edited by the distinguished drama critic of the New York Daily News, John Chapman. Mr. Chapman, good evening. Almost 600 years ago, a man named Geoffrey Chaucer coined a phrase. He couldn't spell very well, apparently, so what he wrote must have sounded to him something like this. Mordra wall out, certain. It wall not file. We've been practicing up on spelling and pronunciation during the last few centuries and have figured out that what Chaucer meant was murder will out, certainly. It can't miss. And so it can't. It rarely misses in the theater. The season of 1940-41 was an excellent one for murder, and for comedy in the best plays of the Broadway theater. Owen Davis had adapted a novel by Francis and Richard Lockridge, Mr. and Mrs. North, about an attractive young couple blundering their way into the detective business, and this play was a hit. Joseph Kesselring wrote another one about murder by the dozen, which he originally titled Bodies in Our Cellar. This turned out to be Arsenic and Old Lace, which had 1,444 performances. Only six other plays in the history of the Broadway stage have run longer. In the company on the first night of January 10, 1941, were Boris Karloff, Jean Adair, and other fine comedians. Now, in this best play's performance, we have Mr. Karloff and Donald Cook as two strangely different brothers. Mr. Cook currently is starring in the Broadway hit The Moon is Blue. Our company also includes Jean Adair and Edgar Staley from the original production... <laughs> And Evelyn Varden is the nice little lady who likes to give all our guests elderberry wine. The performance is beginning. On a quiet street under the arching elms in the town of Brooklyn, New York, the old Brewster home stands in dignified and over-decorated glory. The gas mantles are still in the hall, although electricity was installed several years ago. It's tea time. And Miss Abby Brewster pours. The minister is visiting, and Miss Abby and her nephew Teddy are most attentive. Won't you have another biscuit, Dr. Harper? Oh, no, Miss Abby. I always eat too many of your biscuits just to taste the lovely jam. But you haven't tried the quince. We always put a little apple in with it to take the tartness out. We'll send you over a jar. Teddy, more tea. What? Oh, bless. Bless. Uh, Miss Abby, I've been meaning to speak to you about your nephew, Mortimer, I mean. Oh, yes, I understand he's taking Elaine to the theater again tonight. Uh, Teddy, your brother Mortimer will be here a little later. Delighted. We are so happy it's Elaine that Mortimer takes to the theater with him. Uh, <clears throat> Miss Abby, I'll be frank with you. I do not entirely approve your nephew's unfortunate connection with the theater. A drama critic is constantly exposed to the theater, and I fear some of them do develop an interest in it. Well, not Mortimer. You need have no fear of that. Why, Mortimer hates the theater. Really? Oh, yes, he writes awful things about the theater. But you can't blame him, poor boy. He was so happy writing about real estate, which he really knew something about. And then they just made him take this terrible night position. My, my. But as he says, the theater can't last much longer anyway. And in the meantime, it's a living. Oh, now, who do you suppose that is? I'm coming. I'm coming. Oh, hello, Miss Brewster. How are you, Officer Brophy? Come in. Thank you. Oh, afternoon, sir. Sir, what news have you brought me? Uh, Colonel, I have nothing to report. Splendid. Thank you, sir. At ease. Yep, we've uh, come for the Christmas toys, Miss Brewster. That's a splendid job you men do fixing toys for the children. Yeah, well, it gives us something to do when we sit around the station. You get tired playing cards. 
Then you start cleaning your gun, and the first thing you know, you've shot yourself in the foot. Uh, Teddy, dear, go upstairs and get that big box from your Aunt Martha's room. Delighted. That's right, dear, up the stairs. How is Mrs. Brophy today? Pneumonia. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Ah! Oh, she's much better now. Um... A little weak still. Well, I'm going to tell Sister Martha, and she'll bring you over some beef broth for her. And I'll be right back. Now. Oh, don't bother, Miss Abby. You've done so much for her already. Oh, uh oh. Hey, Colonel, you promised not to do that. But I have to call a cabinet meeting to get the release of those supplies. Uh, he used to do that in the middle of the night. The neighbors complain about him. Oh, he's quite harmless. Oh, sure, sure. I suppose he does think he's Teddy Roosevelt. It's a shame a nice family like this hatching a cuckoo. The grandfather made a million dollars. Uh, patent medicine. Yeah. Officer Brophy. And Dr. Harper. How nice. Oh, uh, hello, Miss Martha. I, uh, I come to get the Christmas toys. Oh, yes. Teddy's Army and Navy. They wear out. Oh, you're that, Martha. Uh, how is poor Mr. Benitsky? Well, dear, it's, it's pretty serious, I'm afraid. Uh, the doctor was there. He's going to amputate in the morning. Can we be present? No, dear, I asked him. But he said it's against the rules of the hospital or or something. Oh, oh here's Teddy with the Army and Navy. Oh, thanks, Colonel. This will make a lot of kids happy. What's this? What's this? What's this? The USS Oregon? Oh, no, Teddy, dear. Put it back. But the Oregon goes to Australia. Uh, thank you again, ma'am. Yes, sir, Colonel. Dismissed? Yes, sir. I shall retire to field headquarters. The blockhouse? The stairs are over San Juan Hill. Uh, have you ever tried to persuade him he wasn't Teddy Roosevelt? Oh, no. Oh, he's so happy being Teddy Roosevelt. Oh, once a long time ago, remember, Martha, we thought if, we, if he could be George Washington, it might be a change for him. But he stayed under his bed for days and just wouldn't be anybody. And we'd so much rather he'd be Mr. Roosevelt than nobody. Well, if he's happy, <clears throat> I'd better be running along. Give our love to Elaine. And Dr. Harper, please don't think too harshly of Mortimer because he's a dramatic critic. Somebody has to do these things. Uh, goodbye. Did you just have tea? Isn't it rather late? Yes. And dinner's going to be late, too. So? Bye. Teddy! Yes, Aunt Abby? Good news for you. You're going to Panama and dig another lock for the canal. Delighted. That's bully. Just bully. I shall prepare at once for the journey. Oh. Ah! Abby, you mean... Yes, dear? While I was out? Yes. Dear, I just couldn't wait for you. I didn't know when you'd be back and Dr. Harper was coming. But, dear, all by yourself. I run right downstairs and see. Oh, no, no, there wasn't time. Then where did you... Martha, look in the window seat. The window seat? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, dear, lift the lid. Oh, Abby... Abby, isn't it just too delightful? And to think you managed it all by yourself. We're almost home, Elaine. Now make up your mind. Where do you want to go for dinner? No, I don't care, Mortimer, really. Well, suppose we wait till after the show. Well, that'll make it pretty late, won't it? Not with a little stinker we're seeing tonight. Well... I was hoping it'd be a musical. They seem to have a humanizing effect on you, darling. After a serious play, we joined the proletariat in the subway, and I listened to that lecture on the drama. It wasn't until we saw a musical that you took me home in a taxi and uh, noticed my legs. Elaine, uh, where could we be married in a hurry, say, uh, tonight? <laughs> Now, I'm afraid Father will insist on officiating. Now, I bet your father could make even the marriage service sound pedestrian. Are you by any chance writing a review of it? <laughs> Sorry, darling. Occupational disease. <laughs> yeah, here we are. 
The Brewster Man Show. Yeah. Thanks, guys. You got Teddy at the door? Yes. Well, what's he doing in shorts and a sun helmet? Hello, Mortimer. How are you, Mr. President? Bully, thank you. Just bully. What uh, news have you brought me? Just this. Mr. President, the country is squarely behind you. Yes, I know. Isn't it wonderful? Well, goodbye. Where are you off to, Teddy? Panama. Uh, Panama's the cellar. He digs locks for the canal down there. Oh, you're very sweet with him. Uh, Teddy always was my favorite brother. Favorite? With the more of you? There's another brother, Jonathan. We don't talk about him. He left Brooklyn very early by request. Jonathan was the kind of boy who liked to cut worms in two with his teeth. What became of him? I don't know. He wanted to become a surgeon like Grandfather, but he wouldn't go to medical school first, and his practice got him into trouble. Oh. Well, goodbye, darling. I'll uh, run over and say goodnight to Father before I go out with you. He likes to pray over me a little. Mm -hmm. I'll be right back. I'll cut across the cemetery. Hello, Mortimer. Oh, hello, Aunt Abby. Did you see my chapter on Thoreau? I want to show it to Elaine. No, I haven't seen it, dear. We thought you'd like a little something before you leave. Martha's getting a piece of the Lady Baltimore cake. Dr. Harper was here to tea. He's uh, concerned about Elaine going to the theater so much. <laughs> he loved tonight's horror. Murder will out. Oh, dear. Well, I think I'll open a bottle of wine. It'll be nice with the cake. Yeah, I can see it all now. The same old thing. When the curtain goes up... Uh, where is that chapter? Uh, the first thing you will see, uh, maybe uh, in the window seat, uh, will be a dead body. Uh, sure, just like this one. A, a, dead, a dead body. A dead body. There is a happy land far, far away. Uh, Lady Baltimore cake is so nice with a little wine, don't you think, dear? Uh, Aunt Martha uh, and Abby... Hmm? Yes, dear? You, um, you told me you were going to make plans for Teddy to go to that uh, sanitarium, Happy Dale. Yes, dear, it's all arranged. Teddy has to sign the papers. Uh, he's got to sign them right away. Well, you've got to know sometime. I'm frightfully sorry, but I I've got some shocking news for you. Teddy's killed a man. Nonsense, dear. There there there's a body in that window seat. Yes, dear, we know. Oh, well, you... Did you know? Now, Mortimer, just forget about it. Forget you ever saw the gentleman. Forget? We never dreamed you'd peek. But, but who is he? His name is Hoskins, Adam Hoskins. That's really all I know about him, except that he's a Methodist. Well, what's he doing here? What happened to him? He died. Aunt Martha, men don't just get into windows seats and die. No, he died first. Well, how? Oh, Mortimer, don't be so inquisitive. The gentleman died because he drank some wine with poison in it. How did the poison get in the wine? Well, uh, we put it in the wine because it's less noticeable. When it's in tea, it has a distinct odor. You put it in the wine? Yes. And I put Mr. Hoskins in the window seat because Dr. Harper was coming. Oh, so you knew what you'd done. You, you didn't want Dr. Harper to see the body. Well, not at tea. That wouldn't have been very nice. Now you know the whole thing, Mortimer, just forget about it. I do think Martha and I have the right to our own little secrets. Butter plate, Martha, butter plate. Yes, of course, dear. Oh, oh, Abby, while I was out, I dropped in on Mrs. Schultz. She's much better. Yes, and uh, she would like us to take Junior to the movies again. Well, we must do that tomorrow or the next day. Yes, but this time we'll go where we want to go. Junior's not going to drag me into another one of those scary pictures. Uh, Aunt Martha, Aunt Abby, wh what are we going to do? What are we going to do about what, dear? There's a body in that window seat. Yes, Mr. Hoskins. Well, good heavens, I can't turn you over to the police. What am I going to do? Well, for one thing, dear, stop being so excited. And for pity's sake, stop worrying. We told you to forget the whole thing. Forget? My dear Aunt Abby, can't I make you realize that something has to be done? Now, Mortimer, you behave yourself. You're too old to be flying off. Off the handle like this. But you can't leave him there. We don't intend to, dear. No, Teddy's down in the cellar digging the rock. You you mean you're going to bury him, Mr. Hotchkiss, in the, in the cellar? Hoskins, dear. Oh, yes, dear. Of course, that's what we did with the others. Oh, no, no, no. You can't bury Mr. Others. The other gentlemen. When you say other, do, do you mean others? I, I, I... 
more than one other? Oh, yes, dear. Let me see. This is um, 11, isn't it, Abby? No, dear. This makes 12. Oh, I think you're wrong, Abby. This is only 11. No, dear, because I remember when Mr. Hoskins first came in, it occurred to me that he would make just an even dozen. Well, you really shouldn't count the first one, dear. Oh, well, I was. I was counting the first one. So that makes it 12. Now, hello. Uh, oh. Hello? Al? Oh, my, it's good to hear your voice. 12, 11. <laughs> Al? Al? Oh, uh, checking up. Well, I know I didn't pick uh, pick up the tickets. Yeah, I'm glad you called. Now, uh, get a hold of George right away. He's got to review the play for me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'll explain later. Now, now, let's see. Where were we? Twelve. Yes. Abby thinks we ought to count the first one, and that makes it twelve. Well, all right. Now, all right. Who was the first one? Mr. Midgley. He was a Baptist. He came here looking for a room. He was such a lonely old man. All his kith and kin were dead, and it left him so forlorn and unhappy. We felt so sorry for him. And then when his heart attack came, and he sat in that chair looking so peaceful. Remember, Martha? Mm -hmm. We made up our minds then and there that if we could help other lonely old men to the same peace, we would. He dropped dead right in that chair? Oh, how awful for you. Oh, no, dear. Why, it was rather like old times. Your grandfather always used to have a cadaver or two around the place. Well, I know, but... You, uh, you see, Teddy had the digging in Panama, and he thought Mr. Midgley was a yellow fever victim. That meant he had to be buried immediately. So we all took him down to Panama and put him in the lock. And that's how it started? Of course, we realized we couldn't depend on that happening again, so... Uh, you remember those jars of poison that have been up on the shelves in Grandfather's laboratory all these years? You know your Aunt Martha's knack for mixing things. You've eaten enough of her pickle <laughs> <laughs> Well, dear, for a gallon of elderberry wine, I take one teaspoonful of arsenic, then add half a teaspoonful of strychnine, and then just... A pinch of cyanide. Should have quite a kick. Yes, as a matter of fact, one of our gentlemen found time to say, how delicious. Yes, he did. Oh, well, well, we'd have to get things started in the kitchen for supper. I wish you could stay, Mortimer. I'm trying out a new recipe. I oh, couldn't eat a thing. <laughs> Hello, darling. I keep you waiting. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's you. Uh, you run along home, Elaine. I'll call you up tomorrow. Tomorrow? Well, you know I always call you every day or two. Uh, well, we're going to the theater tonight. Oh, no, no, we're not. Uh, Elaine, uh, something's come up. Now, uh, now you run along home. What's happened? If we're going to be married. Married? Have you forgotten that not 15 minutes ago you proposed to me? I did. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, as far as I know, that's still on. Now, now you run along home. If, listen, you can't propose to me one minute and throw me out of the house the next. Well, I'm not throwing you out of the house, darling. Uh, will you get out of here? You will push. Now, you get out, and I'll, I'll call you in a few days. Mortimer, you... Mortimer! Phew. Yeah. Hello, Al. What? Uh, George is in Bermuda. Oh, well, get somebody. Uh, get the office boy. Uh, you know, the bright one, the one we don't like. All right, then. Get the printer. He knows what I write. A third machine from the left. Yeah, but Al, he might turn out to be another John Chapman. Yeah, all right. All right. Was that a name, dear? Aunt Martha, Aunt Abby, sit down. But Mortimer... Uh, sit down. There. Well, dear? You can't do things like that. Now, I don't know how to explain this to you, but it's not only against the law. It's wrong. It's not a nice thing to do. People wouldn't understand. Abby, we shouldn't have told Mortimer. Well, what I mean is, well, well this has developed into a, a very bad habit. Now, Mortimer, we don't try to stop you from doing things you like to do. I don't see why you should interfere with us. Uh, hello, Al. Oh, all right. Well, all right, I'll see the first act and tear it to pieces. All right. Now, look, I've got to go to the theater, but before I go, will you promise me something? Well, we'd have to know what it was first. W will you do this for me? What do you want us to do? Don't do anything. I mean, don't do anything. 
Don't let anyone in this house and leave Mr. Hoskins right where he is. Why? We were planning on holding services before dinner. Services? Certainly. You don't think we'd bury Mr. Hoskins without a full Methodist service, do you? Why, he was a Methodist. Well, can't I wait till I get back? Oh, then you could join us. Oh, you'll enjoy the service, especially the hymns. Remember, Martha, how beautifully Mortimer used to sing in the choir before his voice changed? And remember, you're not going to let anyone in this house while I'm gone. Uh, have you got some paper? Uh, here's some stationery. Will this do? Oh, that'll be fine. I can save time if I write my review on the way to the theater. Come in, Doctor. I'm right behind you, Johnny. Well, this is the home of my youth. Oh. As a boy, I couldn't wait to escape from this place. Now I'm glad to escape back into it. Yeah, Johnny, it's a fine hideout. The family must still live here. There's something so unmistakably Brewster about the Brewsters. I hope there's a fatted calf awaiting the return of the prodigal. Yeah, I'm hungry. Oh, look, Johnny, a drink. <laughs> Elderberry wine. A good omen. Here's to you, Johnny. Who's that? Who's that? Who are you? What are you doing here? Why, Aunt Abby, Aunt Martha. It's Jonathan. You get out of here. But I'm Jonathan, your nephew, Jonathan. Oh, no, you're not. You're nothing like Jonathan, so don't pretend you are. You just get out of here. But, Aunt Abby, I am Jonathan, and this is Dr. Einstein. And he's not Dr. Einstein, either. Not Dr. Albert Einstein, Dr. Herman Einstein. His voice is like Jonathan's. Have you been in an accident? No. My face. Dr. Einstein is responsible for that. He changes people's faces. Abby. Abby, I've seen that face before. Oh, do you remember when we took the little Schultz boy to the movies and I was so frightened? It was that thing. Oh, Martha. Oh, easy, Johnny, easy. Now, no, don't worry, ladies. The last five years I give Johnny three new faces. His last one, well, I, I saw that picture, too, just before I operate, and uh, I, I was intoxicated. You see, Doctor? You see what you've done to me? Even my own family. Johnny, Johnny, you're home. These are your lovely aunts. They know you. <laughs> well, Jonathan, it's been a long time. Um, uh, where have you been all these years? Oh, England, South Africa, Australia... And the last five years, Chicago. <laughs> Dr. Einstein and I were in business there together. Oh, we were in Chicago for the World's Fair. Yes, we found Chicago awfully warm. Yeah, it got hot for us, too. Oh, well, it's wonderful to be in Brooklyn again. And you, Abby, Martha, you don't look a day older, just as I remembered you. Sweet, charming, hospitable... And dear Teddy, I remember him so high. And did he get into politics? Well, you know, Doctor, my little brother was determined to become president. Yeah. <clears throat> well, Jonathan, it's very nice to have seen you again. Bless you, Aunt Martha. It's good to be home again. Well, Martha, we mustn't let what's on the stove boil over. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. If you'll excuse us, Jonathan, unless you're in a hurry to go somewhere. Martha! Oh, yes, I'm coming, Abby. Well, Johnny, where do we go from here? The police have pictures of that face. I got to operate on you right away. We got to find some place for Mr. Spinalzo, too. Don't waste any worry on that rat. But, Johnny, we got a hot stiff on our hands. You can't leave a dead body in a rumble seat. We shouldn't have killed him, Johnny. He was a nice fellow. He gives us a lift. And what happens? He said I looked like Boris Karloff. 
That's your work, Doctor. You did that to me. Now, now, Chani, we, we find a place somewhere. I, I fix you up, Chris. Tonight. Now, Chani, I, I got to eat first. I'm hungry and I'm weak. Jonathan, we are, we're glad you remembered us and took the trouble to come in and say hello. But um, you were never happy in this house, and we were never happy while you were in it. So we've uh, just come in to say goodbye. But, Aunt Abby, I promised Dr. Einstein that if ever we came to Brooklyn, I'd bring him here for... For one of Aunt Martha's home-cooked dinners. Yeah. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. I'm afraid there wouldn't be enough. Oh, Abby, it's a pretty good size, Pot Roast. Pot Roast. I think the least we can Thank do is... Thank you, Aunt Martha. We'll stay to dinner. Uh-huh. Well, we'll, uh, we'll hurry it along. And, uh, Jonathan, if you want to freshen up, why don't you use the washroom in Grandfather's old laboratory? Huh? Is that still there? Oh, yes. Uh, come along, Martha. We're all in a hurry. <coughs> well, we get a meal anyway. Grandfather's laboratory. Hmm? Doctor, a perfect operating room. Oh, too bad we can't use oh, it. I'll handle this. Why, this house will be our headquarters for years. You mean... Oh, that would be beautiful, Johnny. This nice, quiet house... And those aunts of yours, what sweet ladies. <laughs> I love them already. I get the bags from the car. Doctor, <laughs> we must wait till we're invited. And if they say no... Doctor, two helpless old ladies. Oh. <laughs> oh, it all comes to a beautiful dream. It's so peaceful. That's what makes this house so perfect for us. It's so peaceful. <laughs> oh, Richard Lockridge, co-author of Mr. and Mrs. North, took a sporting view of arsenic and old lace on that January 1st night in 1941. His own play was to open two nights later. But here he was, the drama critic of the New York Sun, bound to report truthfully on what he thought about arsenic. Lockridge wrote, It is a noisy, preposterous, incoherent joy. You wouldn't believe that homicidal mania could be such great fun. This was gallant of him, and accurate, too. Now our second act of Arsenic and Old Lace begins. Oh, Aunt Martha, you haven't lost any of your skill. Why, thank you, Jonathan. And now I know you and Dr. Einstein both want to get where, where you're going. But, my dear aunts, I'm so full of that delicious dinner, I just can't move a muscle. Yeah, it's so nice here. <laughs> well, after all, it's, it's very late. I found it. I found it. Did you lose something, Teddy? I found it. The story of my life, my biography. You see, here we are, both of us. President Roosevelt and General Gothels at Culebra Cut. That's me, General, and that is you. My, how I've changed. Well, you see, that picture hasn't been taken yet. We haven't even started work on the Calabra Cut. General, we will both go to Panama now to inspect the locks. Uh, no, Teddy, not to Panama. Yeah, Panama's a long way off. Nonsense! Just down on the cellar. The cellar? Yes, we let him dig <laughs> the Panama Canal in the cellar. General, as President of the United States, I demand that we inspect the locks immediately. Teddy, I think it's time you went to bed. I beg your pardon? Who are you? I'm Woodrow Wilson. Go to bed. No. You're not Wilson. But your face is familiar. Let me see. Yeah. Perhaps I meet you later on my hunting trip to Africa. Yes. Yes. You look like someone I might meet in the jungle. Daddy. It's your brother, Jonathan, dear. He's had his face changed. Oh, so that's it. A nature figure. And uh, perhaps you had better go to bed, Teddy. Jonathan and his friend have to go to their hotel. General Gotels, inspect the canal. But China... Inspect the canal. All right, Mr. President. We go to Panama. Bully. Bully. Follow me, General. Oop. I have to wear a sun helmet. It's down south, you know. Of course. 
Well, boy, I... Aunt Abby, I must correct your misapprehension. We have no hotel. We came directly here. This is my home. But, Jonathan, you can't stay here. Aunt Abby, you have a most distinguished guest in Dr. Einstein. I'm afraid you don't appreciate his skill. <laughs> in a few weeks, you'll see me looking like a very different Jonathan. Oh, but he can't operate on you here. Ah, I forgot to tell you. We are turning Grandfather's laboratory into an operating room. We expect to be quite busy. Hey, hey, shut him down in this head. Dr. I... Einstein, my dear aunts have invited us to live with them. Oh, you fixed it. Well, you're sleeping here tonight. Aunt Abby, please get our room ready. But... Now. Well, come along, Martha, dear. Johnny, when I go down in the cellar, what do you think I find? What? The Panama Canal. Ah, the Panama Canal. It's a hole, Teddy Doug, six feet long and four feet wide. Down there? And it just fits Mr. Spinaldo. Oh, 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 rather a good joke on my aunts. <laughs> They're living in a house with a body buried in the cellar. <laughs> Come on, we'll bring it in through the window. <laughs> Poor dear Mr. Hoskins, he's been so patient in the window seat. I think Teddy had better get Mr. Hoskins downstairs right away. Abby, I will not invite Jonathan to the funeral services. Oh, no, we'll wait until they've gone to bed and then come down and hold the services. The general was very pleased. He says the canal is just the right size. He says that... Teddy, uh, Teddy, there's been another yellow fever victim. Oh, dear me. This will be a shock to the general. But I'll have to tell him. Army regulations, you know. Uh, no, Teddy, we must keep it a secret. Yes. A state secret? Yes, a state secret. Promise? You have the word of the President of the United States. Cross my heart and hope to die. Now, Teddy, you must take the poor man down to the canal. And we'll come down later and hold services. You may announce that the President will say a few words. Where is the poor devil? He's in the window seat. Oh, seems to be spreading. We've never had yellow people there before. Ah, well, up we go. Ah, he died for his country. Open the cellar door, Aunt Abby. Johnny. Johnny, are you out there? Wait. I'll lift up Mr. Spinal's house. Wait, I can't see good, Johnny. It's so dark. Oh, yes, sir. What happened? Someone left the window seat off and I fell in. Well, get out. Take Mr. Spinal's home. Uh, oops. Uh, I, I lost the leg. But the, here. Yeah, Johnny, somebody's coming. Get him in the window seat. Quick. All right, all right. Here. Give me a hand in through the here, window. Here, here. Are you in? Yes, Miss Abby? Miss Martha? Miss Abby, it's so dark in here. <gasps> Who are you? Elaine Harper. I li live next door. Turn on the lights, Doctor. Yeah. Oh, who are you? Where are Miss Abby and Miss Martha? Perhaps we'd better introduce ourselves. This is Dr. Einstein. Dr. Einstein? I... I suppose you're going to tell me you're Boris. I'm oh. Jonathan Brewster. Oh, you're Jonathan? Oh, you've heard of me. <laughs> Just this afternoon. Well, I'll be running along oh, home no, now. I think she's dangerous. She's seen us. They really let her go, Jimmy. She saw us. Remember that. Stay away from me. Take your hands off me. Oh, Teddy. It's going to be a private funeral. Oh, Teddy, tell these men who I am, please. What? That's my daughter, Alice. Oh, no. Ah! Oh, see your handkerchief. Oh, help. Get it out of the cellar, Get quick. This way, come, please. Help. What's going on down there? What are you doing? We caught a burglar, a sneak thief. Go back to your room. Look out, Johnny. She got away. Oh, let go of me. Elaine. Mortimer, where have you been? At the Henry Miller Theater. Well, who's this? This is your brother, Jonathan. And this is Dr. Einstein. Well, I know this isn't a nightmare, but what is it? I've come back home, Mortimer. Jonathan? Jonathan? What? 
You always were a horror, but you have to look like one? Mortimer, have you forgotten the things I used to do to you when we were boys? Remember the times you were tied to the bedpost, to the needles, under your fingernails? It is, Jonathan. Oh, I remember. I remember you as the most vicious, venomous form of animal life I ever knew. Now, don't you boys start quarreling again the minute you've seen each other. Jonathan, you're not wanted here. Now, get out. Well, I'm sleeping here tonight in your room. Uh, John, here, maybe we better sleep down here, hmm? On the window seat. Window seat? Window seat? Yeah, the window seat. Oh, oh the window seat. Well, uh, maybe I'd better sleep down oh, here. Oh, we wouldn't trouble you. We insist on sleeping down here. Doctor, we'll go up and get our bags. You can have the room in a moment, Mortimer. Mortimer. What's the matter with you, dear? I have almost been killed. You've almost been... Abby. Martha. Oh, no. It was Jonathan. He mistook her for a sweet thief. Uh, would you like some coffee, dear? Oh, great idea. Coffee, sandwiches. I haven't had any dinner. Well, we'll get it ready. Come, Abby. Uh, no wine. No, no, dear. I'm sorry, I'm so late, Elaine, but it's after 12, and I... 12? Elaine, you've got to go home. What? Mortimer, I want to know where I stand. Do you love me? I love you very much, Elaine. I, I love you so much, I, I can't marry you. Have you suddenly gone crazy? Oh, I don't think so, but it's just a matter of time. You see, insanity runs in my family. It, it practically gallops. Oh, now, just because Teddy is a No, little... no, no, it goes way back. The first Brewster, the one who came over on the Mayflower. You know, in those days, the Indians used to scalp the settlers. He used to scalp the Indians. But, but darling, this doesn't prove you're crazy. Well, look at your aunt. They're Brewsters, aren't they? And the same as sweetest people I've ever known. Well, even they have their peculiarities. Mortimer, you're not even looking at me. Come away from that window seat. Yeah, right away, Elaine. Uh, uh, oh, another one. Elaine, you've got to go. Something very important has just come up. Up from where? We're here alone together. Elaine, if you love me, will you get the devil out of here? Uh, Mortimer. Will you kiss me good night? Why, of course, darling. And quickly. Oh. Mm. Well, good night, dear. And I, I'll call you in a day or two. Oh, you, you, pathetic. And Martha, Aunt Abby, come in here. Yes, dear. What is it? Oh, where is Elaine? You promised me. Who is that in the window seat? No one, dear. Look. And it is not Mr. Hoskins. Well, who can that be? Are you trying to tell me you've never seen that man before? I certainly am. Now, Aunt Abby, don't try to get out of this. That's another of your gentlemen. Mortimer, how can you say such a thing? That man is an imposter. And if he came here to be buried in our cellar, he's mistaken. But, Aunt Abby, you put Mr. Hoskins in the window seat. Now, this man couldn't have just gotten the idea from him. By the way, where's Mr. Hoskins? In Panama, waiting for the services, poor dear. We haven't had a minute with Jonathan in the house. Oh, dear, we always wanted to have a double funeral, but... But I will not read services over a total stranger. A stranger? Aunt Abby, how can I believe you? There are 12 men down in the cellar, and you admit you poisoned them. Yes, I did. But you don't think I'd stoop to telling a fib? <laughs> I want a word with you, Aunt Abby, Aunt Martha. I think Jonathan is leaving at once. Oh, no, Martha. Oh, yes, and you're taking your cold companion with you from the window seat. Oh, the window seat? You're my brother, and I'm going to give you a chance to get away. And if you don't take it, I'm going to call the police. Mortimer, remember, what happened to Mr. Spinalzo can happen to you, too. Oh, dear. Come in. Why, Officer Brophy. Oh, hello, Miss Martha, Miss Abby. I... I saw your lights on, and I thought there might be sickness in the family. Oh, come in. Well, come in, officer. This is my brother, Jonathan. Oh, hat. Hey, he looks familiar. Ain't I seen him somewhere? I don't think so. Yeah, it's too bad Jonathan can't stay, isn't it? Well, uh, if everything's all right... Oh, uh, don't, don't, don't go, officer. Stay and have some, have some coffee and a sandwich. Well, if you say so. Yeah, we'll all go into the kitchen while Jonathan collects his things. All his things. Come along, officer. Yeah, sure. Say, Mr. Brewster, I've been meaning to ask you about a play I've been writing. 
Doctor, this affair between my brother and me has got to be settled. Now, Chani, we're but... going to sleep right here tonight. With a cop in the kitchen and Mr. Spinalzo in the window seat? That's all he's got on us. So we take Mr. Spinalzo down and we dump him in the bay and come right back here. Hide the suitcases in the cellar. Go on. I think we should get out, Chani. <coughs> Chani, come quick. What is it? That hole in the cellar. We got an ace in the hole. <laughs> Still here, Jonathan? I-, I thought I told you. We are staying. You think I was bluffing? You think I won't tell Officer Brophy what's in the window seat? Officer Brophy? If you tell Brophy what's in the window seat, I'll tell him what's in the cellar. The cellar? There's an elderly gentleman down there who seems to be very dead. Well, what were you doing in the cellar? Ah, what's he doing in the cellar? No, thank you, ma'am. That, that's all the coffee I can drink. Oh, oh, Mr. Brewster, uh, I'd like to tell you the plot of that, that play. Uh, no, I no, no, Brophy, no, you can't stay here. You've got to go and call in the yeah, briefing. Yeah, but I, I want to tell you about this here play. Yeah, well, we'll talk about it later. Yeah, uh, all right. later. Uh, how about the back room at Kelly's? Fine, fine. I'll meet you at Kelly's uh, later. Great, Mr. Brewster. I'll be there. Unless I drop dead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Is that you, Mortimer? It's Jonathan, Aunt Abby. Mortimer went out. Where are you going? To Panama to bury Mr. Spinalzo. But he can't stay in our cellar. There's a friend of Mortimer's downstairs waiting for him. He and Mr. Spinalzo will get along fine together. They're both dead. They must be Mr. Hoskins. You, You know about what's downstairs? Of course we do, and he's no friend of Mortimer's. He's one of our gentlemen. Your gentleman? Besides, there's no room for Mr. Spinalzo. The cellar's crowded already. Crowded? With what? There are twelve graves down there now. Twelve graves? And that leaves very little room, and we're going to need it. You mean you and Aunt Martha have murdered... Murdered? Certainly not. It's one of our charities. So you just take your Mr. Spinalzo out of there. You've done that? Here, in this house, and, and you buried them down there? Johnny, we've been chased all over the world. They stay right here in Brooklyn and do just as good as you do. What? You got 12, and they've got 12. I've got 13. No, Johnny, 12. 13? There's Mr. Spinoza. Yeah. Then the first one in London. Two in Johannesburg, one in Sydney, one in Melbourne, two in San Francisco, one in Phoenix. Phoenix? The filling station. The three in Chicago and the one in South Bend. That makes 13. But you can't count the one in South Bend. He died of pneumonia. He wouldn't have got pneumonia if I hadn't shot him. No, Johnny. You got 12 and Dave got 12. The old ladies are just as good as you are. Oh, they are, are they? Well, that's easily taken care of. All I need is one more, that's all. Just one more. Well, here I am. Mortimer, where have you been? Uh, I've been over getting a doctor's signature on Teddy's papers. Mortimer, what is the matter with you? Running around, getting papers signed at a time like this. Do you know what Jonathan is doing down there? He's putting Mr. Hoskins and Mr. Spinalzo in together. Oh, well, let him. Is Teddy in his room? Teddy won't be any help. Well, you had to go and tell Jonathan about those 12 graves. If I can make Teddy responsible for those, I can protect you. Don't you see? No, I don't see. And we pay taxes to have the police protect us. We'll call them. Oh, but you can't. They'll find out about Mr. Hoskins and the other 12 gentlemen. Mortimer, I don't think the police would pry into our private affairs if we asked them not to. No, no, you, you can't do this. I won't let you. Well, if Jonathan and Mr. Spinalzo are not out of this house by morning, we're going to call the police. There. There. All 
out, Aunt Johnny. Mr. Hoskins and Mr. Spinal are all put away, neat and tidy. We're all done. You're forgetting, Doctor. My brother, Mortimer. No, no, Johnny, no. Tonight, and the way we, we do that tomorrow, or the next day. Oh, no, tonight, no, now. Johnny, please, I, I'm tired. Tomorrow I've got to operate. Uh, uh, tonight we go to bed, huh? Doctor, it's going to be done tonight. Uh, Johnny, I know that look. Okay, but uh, the quick way, huh? The, the quick twist, like in London. <coughs> no, Doctor, this calls for something special. I think perhaps... The Melbourne method. Johnny, no, not that. Two hours. And when it was all over, the fellow in London was just as dead as the fellow in Melbourne. Get your instrument. No, Johnny. Get them. We operate tonight, Doctor, on Brother Mortimer. <laughs> Bugle. Mortimer, hand me my bugle. Uh, no, Mr. President, just sign these papers. I cannot sign any proclamation without consulting my cabinet. Uh, but this must be a secret. A secret proclamation? How unusual. Japan oh, mustn't know until it's signed. Oh, Japan, eh? I'll sign it right away. I'll take it into the closet. A secret proclamation has to be signed. A secret. But at once, Mr. President. I'll have to put on my signing clothes. The interview is at an end. Thank you, Mr. President. Sign it right away to... Oh, no! Close the door, Doctor. <laughs> now, won't you sit down, Mortimer? Chew oh, no. on the handkerchief. It's imported lace. <laughs> Doctor, the curtain call. Yeah. Uh, Mortimer, I've been away for 20 years, but every night I've dreamed of you. In London, I dreamed of you, and in Melbourne, I... There. Tight and neat. Now, Doctor, your instrument. We go to work. Ah, please, Johnny, for me the quick way. All ready for you, Doctor. <laughs> nah, I gotta have a drink. I can't do this without a drink. That wine, remember this afternoon? Where did the old lady put... Oh, here. And the berry wine. I, I split it with you. We both need a drink. Very well, Doctor. We'll drink to Mortimer. <laughs> to my dear dead brother. <laughs> Captain meeting on the double. Ah, idiot. He goes next. No, not Teddy. That's where I stop. I draw the line at Teddy. Now we've got to work fast. Yeah, yeah, the quick way. Yes, Doctor, one quick twist of the silk handkerchief. Hey, oh, hey, the, hey the colonel's got to stop blowing that horn. It's all right, officer. You're taking the bugle away from him. We promised the neighbors he wouldn't do that anymore. <laughs> oh, hey, Mr. Brewster. Why are you all tied up? Uh, he, uh, he was explaining the play he saw tonight. That's what happened to the fella in the play. Oh, yeah? Gee, they practically stole that from the second act of my play. I'll tell you uh, 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 No, no, wait a minute. I I'm going to leave you this way. This time, Mr. Brewster, you listen to the plot. Well, it starts... It starts in my mother's dressing room when I was born. Only I ain't born yet. Get back to me, mother. There she is, lying unconscious in her lingerie. The fiend is standing over her with an axe. There. How do you like it so far, huh, Doctor? Well, it put Johnny to sleep. Oh, that's just the second act. Now the third act. Johnny, Johnny, wake up. I can't wake him. What's going on? Johnny, Johnny, it's cop, it's cop. Brophy. Oh, hiya, Lieutenant. Uh, this is Mortimer Brewster. He, he's going to help me write me play. Did you have to tie him up to make him listen? The whole precinct is out looking for you. It's 8 o'clock in the morning. Give me the phone and untie him. Oh, gee, Mr. Brewster, I'll have to run through the third act quick. Hello, Captain. Brophy's here. You don't have to worry. Hmm? Oh. Yeah, we found him in the Brewster uh. house, so you can call off the big manhunt. Uh. You want us to bring him in? Manhunt? Oh, so I've been turned in, huh? Oh, no, buddy, you got us wrong. I suppose you and that stool pigeon brother of mine will split the reward. Reward? Grab him, Brophy. <laughs> you stay still, Mac. Now I'll do some turning in. There are 13 bodies buried in our cellar. Oh, uh, yeah? I'll show you. You come on down to the cellar with me. 13 bodies. Maybe you better go down, Joe. Uh, with him? 
Not me. He looks like Boris Carlin. Ah! Oh, get him off me, Rooney. Help me. Uh, help me. Uh, your head out of the way. Uh, oh. Well, what do you know about that? Imagine him claiming there was 13 bodies buried in the cellar. Ah! Get him out of here. Well, I'll have to drag him by the feet. I'll take him into the kitchen. What a story. Ah. Thirteen bodies buried in the cellar. Sir, there are thirteen bodies buried in the cellar. Who are you? I'm President Roosevelt. What is this? He's the one that blows the bugle. Oh, dear, dear me. Brother Jonathan, the yellow fever victim. No, no, Colonel, he's a spy. We caught in the White House. Well, will you get him out of here? Now, you. <laughs> Didn't anybody untie you yet? Here, I'll do it. Oh, yeah. Now, Lieutenant, listen to me. That crazy brother of yours has got to be put away. We don't want no more bugles blowing. Oh, yes, yes, I know. I have the papers right here. Uh, Teddy's going to Happy Dale. Now, about those 13 bodies... Yeah, 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 yeah. Can you imagine what would happen if that cockeyed story got around? And now he's starting a yellow fever scare. It's lucky I didn't fall for that story. <laughs> 13 bodies. <laughs> I beg your pardon. I'm Mr. Weatherspoon of Happy Dale. I believe I'm to pick up a gentleman. Oh, uh, Teddy. Just finished my cabinet meeting. Yes, Mortimer. Uh, Mr. President, I have very good news for you. Your term of office is over. Oh, then I start on my hunting trip to Africa, don't I? Well, who's this? Trying to get into the White House before I've moved out? Uh, who, Teddy? Pat! Oh, this isn't, this isn't Mr. Taft, Teddy. This is Mr. Witherspoon. He's your guide for Africa. Oh, bully, bully, bully. Glad to meet you, sir. Aunt Martha, Aunt Abby, I'm on my way to Africa. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, if the safari comes, tell them to wait. Aunt Abby, Aunt Martha, this is Mr. Witherspoon from Happy Dale. Uh, Teddy is going with him. No, he is not. Not while we're alive. The police want him to go. He, he blew his bugle again. That's right, ma'am. Well, if he goes, we're going with him. Yes, we won't be separated from Teddy. But we can't take sane people at Happy Dale. Look, will you settle this? There are still murders to be solved in Brooklyn. Yes. Oh, are there? Teddy's got to go. With the story he's telling, we'd have to dig up the cellar. He says there are 13 bodies buried down there. But there are 13 bodies buried in our cellar. I'll take your word for it, lady. I'm a busy man. How about it with a spoon? Well, they'd have to be committed. Well, Teddy committed himself. Can't they commit themselves? Can't they sign the papers? Certainly. Oh, well, then, if we can go with Teddy, we'll sign the papers. Where are they? Yes, where are they? Sign them up, Witherspoon. I want to get this cleaned up. Oh, my, we've overlooked one thing. Uh, we're going to need the signature of a doctor. A doctor? Oh, 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 yes, a doctor. Dr. Einstein. Hey, meet me. Hey, come over here. We'd like you to sign some papers. Hey, yes, please, I must go. I... No, just come right over here, doctor. <laughs> At one time last night, I thought doctor was going to operate on please, me. Please, <laughs> Yes, doctor, please. just come right over here. Sign right here, doctor. Yes, yes very well. Uh, <laughs> here. <laughs> there. Are you leaving us, doctor? Yes, I think I must go. Oh, aren't you going to wait for Jonathan? I don't think we're going to the same place. There, now. Everything's quite in order. Well, I'm almost relieved. I'm really looking forward to going. The neighborhood here has really run down, so... Well, Mortimer, we're all ready to go now. The house will be yours, and we want you to live in it. Oh, no, no, Aunt Abby. The, the house is too full of, of, of memories. Oh, dear, but you'll need a house when you're married. I'm afraid I can't ever marry Elaine or anybody. Oh, there's something else, Mortimer. You signed our papers as next of kin. Oh, of course, why not? But you see, dear, you're not really a Brewster. Not a Brewster? No, dear. Your mother was a widow when she came to us as a cook, and you were born about three months afterward. But she was such a good cook that we didn't want to lose her, so brother married her. Uh, I'm not really a Brewster? Now, don't feel badly about it, dear. Oh, no. No. Oh, it's a tragedy, isn't it? 
Nobody knows who your father is. He might be anybody. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're, you're right. Well, isn't it wonderful? He, he might be anybody. I've got to tell Elaine. He might be anybody. All right, Jonathan, come on. I'm coming, Lieutenant. <laughs> Goodbye, aunties. So this house is seeing the last of the Brewsters. Well, I can't better my record now, but neither can you. At least I have that satisfaction. The score stands even. Twelve to twelve. <coughs> Jonathan always was a mean boy. Never could stand to see anybody get ahead of him. I wish we could show him he isn't so smart. Well, ladies, perhaps we'd better be going. Um, Ma? Ma? Uh, yes, Daddy? Oh, oh yes. Uh, uh, Mr. Witherspoon, uh, does your family live with you at Happy Dale? I have no family. Oh, that must make it very lonely for you. Uh, I suppose it does. Uh, well, uh... Martha, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Witherspoon, I think at least we should offer you a glass of elderberry wine. Elderberry wine? If you grow your own elderberries? Uh, no, but the cemetery is full of them. Uh, well, uh, uh, you uh, don't see much elderberry wine nowadays. I thought I'd had my last glass of it. Oh, no. Here it is. Well, ladies, to a long life. You have just heard the best plays production of Arsenic and Old Lace, starring Boris Karloff and Donald Cook. Now, here again is your host, drama critic John Chapman. Joseph Kesselring never wrote a sequel to Arsenic and Old Lace, so we don't know what happened to Mr. Witherspoon. Perhaps someday the author will get around to it. In the meantime, we will have another best play for you next Sunday. It will be a rather strange and quite lovely piece, Dark of the Moon, which Howard Richardson and William Burney made from the old hillbilly folk song about Barbara Allen. Our star will be Alfred Drake. Let's all meet again next Sunday in the mountains called the Great Smokies. This is Chapman saying goodbye until then. Arsenic and Old Lace was transcribed and adapted for radio by Ernest Canoy. Boris Karloff was Jonathan, Donald Cook was Mortimer. Evelyn Varden and Gina Dare appeared as Abby and Martha, Edgar Staley as Dr. Einstein, Wendell Holmes as Teddy Brewster, Joan Tompkins as Elaine, Arthur Maitland as Mr. Witherspoon, Ted Osborne as Reverend Harper, and Ed Latimer as Grophy. Best Plays is an NBC production, supervised by William Welch and directed by Edward King. This is Fred Collins speaking. Tonight, America's Press Conference. It's Meet the Press on NBC. At 6.30... KFI Los Angeles. Listen, a new Packard four door sedan costs just twenty nine twenty plus tax and license delivered right here in Southern California. Packard costs less for what you get than any other car. Up to thirty months to pay at Earl C. Anthony Incorporated, one thousand South Hope or ninety one thirty Wilshire Boulevard. From New York, where the American stage begins, NBC presents Best Plays, transcribed with John Chapman. Best 
plays, a series of hour-length dramas based on famous theatrical books begun by the late Burns Mantle, now edited by the distinguished drama critic of the New York Daily News, John Chapman. Mr. Chapman. Good evening. Almost 600 years ago, a man named Geoffrey Chaucer coined a phrase. He couldn't spell very well, apparently, so what he wrote must have sounded to him something like this. Mordra wall out, certain. It wall not file. We've been practicing up on spelling and pronunciation during the last few centuries and have figured out that what Chaucer meant was murder will out, certainly. It can't miss. And so it can't. It rarely misses in the theater. The season of 1940-41 was an excellent one for murder and for comedy and the best plays of the Broadway theater. Owen Davis had adapted a novel by Francis and Richard Lockridge, Mr. and Mrs. North, about an attractive young couple blundering their way into the detective business, and this play was a hit. Joseph Kesselring wrote another one about murder by the dozen, which he originally titled Bodies in Our Cellar. This turned out to be Arsenic and Old Lace, which had 1,444 performances. Only six other plays in the history of the Broadway stage have run longer. In the company on the first night of January 10, 1941, were Boris Karloff, Jean Adair, and other fine comedians. Now, in this best play's performance, we have Mr. Karloff and Donald Cook as two strangely different brothers. Mr. Cook currently is starring in the Broadway hit The Moon is Blue. Our company also includes Gina Dare and Edgar Staley from the original production, and Evelyn Varden as the nice little lady who likes to give all our guests elderberry wine. The performance is beginning. <laughs> Street, under the arching elms in the town of Brooklyn, New York, the old Brewster home stands in dignified and over-decorated glory. The gas mantles are still in the hall, although electricity was installed several years ago. It's tea time, and Miss Abby Brewster pours. The minister is visiting, and Miss Abby and her nephew Teddy are most attentive. Oh, won't you have another biscuit, Dr. Harper? Oh, no, Miss Abby. I always eat too many of your biscuits just to taste the lovely jam. But you haven't tried the quince. We always put a little apple in with it to take the tartness out. We'll send you over a jar. Teddy, more tea. What? Oh, bleh. Bleh. Uh, Miss Abby... I've been meaning to speak to you about your nephew, Mortimer, I mean. Oh, yes, I understand he's taking Elaine to the theater again tonight. Teddy, your brother Mortimer will be here a little later. Delighted. We are so happy it's Elaine that Mortimer takes to the theater with him. Uh, <clears throat> Miss Abby, I'll be frank with you. I do not entirely approve your nephew's unfortunate connection with the theater. A drama critic is constantly exposed to the theater, and I fear some of them do develop an interest in it. Well, not Mortimer. You need have no fear of that. Why, Mortimer hates the theater. Really? Oh, yes, he writes awful things about the theater. But you can't blame him, poor boy. He was so happy writing about real estate, which he really... Uh, you remember those jars of poison that have been up on the shelves in Grandfather's laboratory all these years? You know your Aunt Martha's knack for mixing things. You've eaten enough of her pickle <laughs> Well, dear, for a gallon of elderberry wine, I take one teaspoonful of arsenic. Then add half a teaspoonful of strychnine, and then just a pinch of cyanide. Should have quite a kick. Yes, as a matter of fact, one of our gentlemen found time to say, how delicious. Yes, he did. Oh, well, well, we'd have to get things started in the kitchen for supper. I wish you could stay, Mortimer. I'm trying out a new recipe. I oh, couldn't eat a thing. <laughs> Hello, darling. I keep you waiting. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's you. Uh, you run along home, Elaine. I'll call you up tomorrow. Tomorrow? Well, you know, I always call you every day or two. Uh, well, we're going to the theater tonight. Oh, no, no, we're not. Elaine, something's come up. Now, uh, now you run along home. What's happened? 
If we're going to be married. Married? Have you forgotten that not 15 minutes ago you proposed to me? I did? Oh, oh, yeah. Well, well as far as I know, that's still on. Now, now you run along home. If, listen, you can't propose to me one minute and throw me out of the house the next. Well, I'm not throwing you out of the house, darling. Uh, will you get out of here? You push. Now, you get out, and I'll, I'll call you in a few days. Mortimer, you... Mortimer! Phew. Yeah. Hello, Al. What? Uh, George is in Bermuda. Oh, well, get somebody. Uh, get the office boy. Uh, you know, the bright one, the one we don't like. All right, then. Get the printer. He knows what I write. A third machine from the left. Yeah, but Al, he might turn out to be another John Chapman. Yeah, all right. All right. Was that a name, dear? Aunt Martha. Aunt Abby. Uh, sit down. But Mortimer. Uh, sit down. There. Well, dear? You can't do things like that. Now, I don't know how to explain this to you, but it's not only against the law. It's wrong. It's not a nice thing to do. People wouldn't understand. Abby, we shouldn't have told Mortimer. Well, what I mean is, well, well this has developed into a, a very bad habit. Now, Mortimer, we don't try to stop you from doing things you like to do. I don't see why you should interfere with us. Uh, hello, Al. Oh, all right. Well, all right, I'll see the first act and tear it to pieces. All right. Now, look, I've got to go to the theater, but before I go, will you promise me something? Well, we'd have to know what it was first. W will you do this for me? What do you want us to do? Don't do anything. I mean, don't do anything. Don't let anyone in this house and leave Mr. Hoskins right where he is. Why? We were planning on holding services before dinner. Services? Certainly. You don't think we'd bury Mr. Hoskins without a full Methodist service, do you? Why, he was a Methodist. Well, can't I wait till I get back? Oh, then you could join us. Oh, you'll enjoy the service, especially the hymns. Remember, Martha, how beautifully Mortimer used to sing in the choir before his voice changed? And remember, you're not going to let anyone in this house while I'm gone. Uh, have you got some paper? Uh, here's some stationery. Will this do? Oh, that'll be fine. I can save time if I write my review on the way to the theater. Come in, Doctor. I'm right behind you, Johnny. Well, this is the home of my youth. Oh. As a being you peek. But, but who is he? His name is Hoskins, Adam Hoskins. That's really all I know about him, except that he's a Methodist. Well, what's he doing here? What happened to him? He died. Aunt Martha, men don't just get into window seats and die. No, he died first. Well, how? Oh, Mortimer, don't be so inquisitive. The gentleman died because he drank some wine with poison in it. How did the poison get in the wine? Well, uh, we put it in the wine because it's less noticeable. When it's in tea, it has a distinct odor. You put it in the wine? Yes. And I put Mr. Hoskins in the window seat because Dr. Harper was coming. Oh, so you knew what you'd done. You, you didn't want Dr. Harper to see the body. Well, not at tea. That wouldn't have been very nice. Now you know the whole thing, Mortimer, just forget about it. I do think Martha and I have the right to our own little secrets. Butter plate, Martha, butter plate. Yes, of course, dear. Oh, oh, Abby, while I was out, I dropped in on Mrs. Schultz. She's much better. Yes, and uh, she would like us to take Junior to the movies again. Well, we must do that tomorrow or the next day. Yes, but this time we'll go where we want to go. Junior's not going to drag me into another one of those scary pictures. Uh, Aunt Martha, Aunt Abby, wh what are we going to do? What are we going to do about what, dear? There's a body in that window seat. Yes, Mr. Hoskins. Well, good heavens, I can't turn you over to the police. What am I going to do? Well, for one thing, dear, stop being so excited. And for pity's sake, stop worrying. We told you to forget the whole thing. Forget? My dear Aunt Abby, can't I make you realize that something has to be done? Now, Mortimer, you behave yourself. You're too old to be flying off the handle like this. But you can't leave him there. We don't intend to, dear. No, Teddy's down in the cellar digging the rock. 
You you mean you're going to bury Mr. Hotchkiss in the, in the cellar? Hoskins, dear. Oh, yes, dear. Of course, that's what we did with the others. Oh, no, no, no. You can't bury Mr. Others. The other gentlemen. When you say other, do, do you mean others? I, 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 more than one others? Oh, yes, dear. Let me see. This is um, 11, isn't it, Abby? No, dear. This makes 12. Oh, I think you're wrong, Abby. This is only 11. No, dear, because I remember when Mr. Hoskins first came in, it occurred to me that he would make just an even dozen. Well, you really shouldn't count the first one, dear. Oh, well, I was. I was counting the first one. So that makes it 12. Now, hello. Uh, oh. Hello? Al? Oh, my, it's good to hear your voice. 12, 11. <laughs> Al? Al? Oh, uh, checking up. Well, I know I didn't pick uh, pick up the tickets. Yeah, I'm glad you called. Now, uh, get a hold of George right away. He's got to review the play for me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'll explain later. Now, now, let's see. Where were we? Twelve. Yes. Abby thinks we ought to count the first one, and that makes it twelve. Well, all right. Now, all right. Who was the first one? Mr. Midgley. He was a Baptist. He came here looking for a room. He was such a lonely old man. All his kith and kin were dead, and it left him so forlorn and unhappy. We felt so sorry for him. And then when his heart attack came, and he sat in that chair looking so peaceful. Remember, Martha? Mm -hmm. We made up our minds then and there that if we could help other lonely old men to the same peace, we would. He dropped dead right in that chair? Oh, how awful for you. Oh, no, dear. Why, it was rather like old times. Your grandfather always used to have a cadaver or two around the place. Well, I know, but... You, uh, you see, Teddy had the digging in Panama, and he thought Mr. Midgley was a yellow fever victim. That meant he had to be buried immediately. So we all took him down to Panama and put him in the lock. And that's how it started? Of course, we realized we couldn't depend on that happening again, so we knew something about. And then they just made him take this terrible night position. My, my. But, as he says, the theater can't last much longer anyway, and in the meantime, it's a living. Oh, now, who do you suppose that is? I'm coming, I'm coming. Oh, hello, Miss Brewster. How are you, Officer Brophy? Come in. Thank you. Oh, afternoon, sir. Sir, what news have you brought me? Uh, Colonel, I have nothing to report. Splendid. Thank you, sir. At ease. Yep, we've uh, come for the Christmas toys, Miss Brewster. That's a splendid job you men do fixing toys for the children. Yeah, well, it gives us something to do when we sit around the station. You get tired playing cards. Then you start cleaning your gun and the... First thing you know, you've shot yourself in the foot. Uh, Teddy, dear, go upstairs and get that big box from your Aunt Martha's room. Delighted. That's right, dear. Up the stairs. How is Mrs. Brophy today? Pneumonia. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Ah! Oh, she's much better now. Um, a little weak still. Well, I'm going to tell Sister Martha, and she'll bring you over some beef broth for her. And I'll be right back. Now. Oh, don't bother, Miss Abby. You've done so much for her already. Oh, ah! oh. Uh, uh. Hey, Colonel, you promised not to do that. But I have to call a cabinet meeting to get the release of those supplies. Uh, he used to do that in the middle of the night. The neighbors complain about him. Oh, he's quite harmless. Oh, sure, sure. I suppose he does think he's Teddy Roosevelt. There's a shame a nice family like this hatching a cuckoo. The grandfather made a million dollars. Uh, patent medicine. Yeah. Officer Brophy. And Dr. Harper. How nice. Oh, uh, hello, Miss Martha. I, uh, I come to get the Christmas toys. Oh, yes. Teddy's Army and Navy. They wear out. Oh, you're that, Martha. Uh, how is poor Mr. Benitsky? Well, dear, it's, it's pretty serious, I'm afraid. Uh, the doctor was there. He's going to amputate in the morning. Can we be present? No, dear, I asked him. But he said it's against the rules of the hospital or or something. Oh, oh here's Teddy with the Army and Navy. Oh, thanks, Colonel. This will make a lot of kids happy. What's this? What's this? What's this? The USS Oregon? Oh, no, Teddy, dear. Put it back. But the Oregon goes to Australia. Uh, thank you again, ma'am. Yes, sir, Colonel. Dismissed? Yes, sir. I shall retire to field headquarters. 
Blockhouse. The stairs are always San Juan Hill. Uh, have you ever tried to persuade him he wasn't Teddy Roosevelt? Oh, no. Oh, he's so happy being Teddy Roosevelt. Oh, once a long time ago, remember, Martha, we thought if, we, if he could be George Washington, it might be a change for him. But he stayed under his bed for days and just wouldn't be anybody. And we'd so much rather he'd be Mr. Roosevelt than nobody. Well, if he's happy, <clears throat> I'd better be running along. Give our love to Elaine. And Dr. Harper, please don't think too harshly of Mortimer because he's a dramatic critic. Somebody has to do these things. Uh, goodbye. Did you just have tea? Isn't it rather late? Yes. And dinner's going to be late, too. So? Bye. Teddy! Yes, Aunt Abby? Good news for you. You're going to Panama and dig another lock for the canal. Delighted. That's bully. Just bully. I shall prepare at once for the journey. Oh. Ah! Abby, you mean... Yes, dear? While I was out? Yes. Dear, I just couldn't wait for you. I didn't know when you'd be back and Dr. Harper was coming. But, dear, all by yourself. I run right downstairs and see. Oh, no, no, there wasn't time. Then where did you... Martha, look in the window seat. The window seat? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, dear, lift the lid. Oh, Abby... Abby, isn't it just too delightful? And to think you managed it all by yourself. We're almost home, Elaine. Now make up your mind. Where do you want to go for dinner? No, I don't care, Mortimer, really. Well, suppose we wait till after the show. Well, that'll make it pretty late, won't it? Not with a little stinker we're seeing tonight. Well... I was hoping it'd be a musical. They seem to have a humanizing effect on you, darling. After a serious play, we joined the proletariat in the subway, and I listened to that lecture on the drama. It wasn't until we saw a musical that you took me home in a taxi and uh, noticed my legs. Elaine, uh, where could we be married in a hurry, say, uh, tonight? <laughs> Now, I'm afraid Father will insist on officiating. Now, I bet your father could make even the marriage service sound pedestrian. Are you by any chance writing a review of it? <laughs> Sorry, darling. Occupational disease. <laughs> yeah, here we are. The Brewster Mansion. Thanks, darling. Is that Teddy at the door? Yes. Well, what's he doing in shorts and a sun helmet? Hello, Mortimer. How are you, Mr. President? Bully, thank you. Just bully. What, uh... News have you brought me? Just this. Mr. President, the country is squarely behind you. Yes, I know. Isn't it wonderful? Well, goodbye. Where are you off to, Teddy? Panama. Uh, Panama's the cellar. He digs locks for the canal down there. Oh, you're very sweet with him. Uh, Teddy always was my favorite brother. Favorite? With the more of you? There's another brother, Jonathan. We don't talk about him. He left Brooklyn very early, by request. Jonathan was the kind of boy who liked to cut worms in two with his teeth. What became of him? I don't know. He wanted to become a surgeon like Grandfather, but he wouldn't go to medical school first, and his practice got him into trouble. Oh. Well, goodbye, darling. I'll uh, run over and say goodnight to Father. Before I go out with you, he likes to pray over me a little. Mm -hmm. I'll be right back. I'll cut across the cemetery. Hello, Mortimer. Oh, hello, Aunt Abby. Did you see my chapter on Thoreau? I want to show it to Elaine. No, I haven't seen it, dear. We thought you'd like a little something before you leave. Martha's getting a piece of the Lady Baltimore cake. Dr. Harper was here to tea. He's uh, concerned about Elaine going to the theater so much. <laughs> he loved tonight's horror. Murder will out. Oh, dear. Well, I think I'll open a bottle of wine. It'll be nice with the cake. Yeah, I can see it all now. The same old thing. When the curtain goes up... Uh, where is that chapter? Uh, the first thing you will see, uh, maybe in the window seat, uh, will be a dead body. 
Oh, sure, just, just like this one. A, a dead... A dead body. A dead body. There is a happy land far, far away. Lady Baltimore cake is so nice with a little wine, don't you think, dear? Uh, Aunt Martha uh, and Abby. Hmm? Yes, dear? You, um, you told me you were going to make plans for Teddy to go to that uh, uh, sanitarium, Happy Dale. Yes, dear, it's all arranged. Teddy has to sign the papers. Uh, he's got to sign them right away. Well, you've got to know sometime. I'm frightfully sorry, but I- I've got some shocking news for you. Teddy's killed a man. Nonsense, dear. There- there- there's a body in that window seat. Yes, dear, we know. Oh, well, you... Did you know? Now, Mortimer, just forget about it. Forget you ever saw the gentleman. Forget? We never dreamed.